Welcome to the Packer Universe podcast. We're a Green Bay Packers fan podcast, bringing you topical and relevant Packers news, along with our humble, subjective opinions. This is episode 245. We're recording this on a Wednesday, November 1st, 2023. The Packers are on a four-game losing streak, coming off the loss to the Vikings at home in week eight. What will week nine have in store for us? The West Coast LA Rams are in town this Sunday. I'm your host, Tay. And joining me in studio tonight is our one and only MVVVPP. Ren, what up, Tay? Good to be back in the studio to talk some Packers football. We only have to endure nine more weeks of this season, Tay. It is the 1st of November. (laughs) I know uh, a lot of people are getting their Christmas lists, uh, you know, penciled in and uh, maybe uh, writing a win or a couple dubs down. Not sure if Santa (laughs) is going to bring those to the universe here the rest of uh, 2023 with also one week of 2024 Tay. So how are you doing uh, on this, on this Wednesday, the first day, I know you had to mark the tape what five seconds in <laughs> mark it. You're, you're already thinking to Christmas. What are you trying to get? Like, you know, like into something good here. Like we got a whole <laughs> month of uh, like three weeks before Thanksgiving. That's a fun time. And then you got like, what, uh, another month before Christmas, so you're you're way ahead of yourself. No, so I'm trying to end this season before it's even halfway. Well, done? I mean, it generally, Tay, it's it's over. But that said, no, I, I like the November lead up to uh, Thanksgiving. I'm all about it. We get that gift of Thursday morning football on Ugh. Thanksgiving with the Pack and the Lions. Uh, that's that's definitely going to be a sock full of coal on that one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that said, Tay, no, it, this should be Thanksgiving time. But you know. Every year it speeds up, like literally like flip to 12 or 1 a.m. after Halloween. It's like yeah, roll out yeah. the Christmas music, the Christmas movies, the Christmas everything. Black Friday starts like uh, all November. All the sales are started. They yeah. are. Like we got Black Friday Monday, but that's not for three weeks. But then we got Black Friday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's a Saturday. It's a Wednesday. Black Friday every day. You know, it's just uh, it's insane. It needs. Thanksgiving needs to have its time. Fall, let the rest of fall peter out, and then mm-hmm. they can have their four weeks of the Christmas holiday. But again, the wish list. Tay, I know we're going out and yeah. Well, and I and I know Goody yeah. hit the mic today. He uh, did. He, he did. He, he uh, oh yeah. He might have some wish lists, and and that being uh, how do I uh, wish people take my presser, and that is just a bunch of non-answered, nonsensical BS. Uh, what you think of the Goody? presser today tay let's like before we get to the vikings let's talk about <laughs> there is only rasul is now gone so there's not yeah. only rasul anymore there we're is. a little disappointed in that but uh, there is no rasul the, anymore. there is no rasul is so what do you think of that uh, really detailed lot to garner from good against presser today here on the first of november you know Actually, for the one of the first times, I, I thought he was actually prepared for this one. Usually, he seems a little off, like he's not like, oh, I gotta get in front of the media, like like a few times a year. Oh, look out! Uh, but this time, he actually kind of, I think, was prepared for all these all these shots fired that were gonna be coming at him, and they were. There were some really good questions, like, hey, wh- how is trading Rasul today gonna or t- yesterday, whatever, you know? how is that going to help you win again on Sunday? And it's like, he, he's like, uh, uh, well, it's not, but, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, looking at our, you know, all the young players and seeing what they have to offer. And, uh, uh, yeah, but I, I, I wrote a bunch of things down when he was, when he was going through his, his presser, but I was, um, I guess I was surprised that he, he looked poised. He looked like he had answers ready. I don't think he, I think the questions, you might be right. Some of the questions are good, Tan. Yeah. I think there was a lot of like I'm not talking about the answers GM yet. speak. I didn't say I didn't, I'm part. not interpreting the, the answers quite yet. But I think uh he was ready for this one. And he basically kind of laid it out. I I made some notes here. He he, you know, he's like, Well, obviously we expected better results from the season so far. No duh. Um, but he still says the guys are putting in the work the right way. And he sees glimpses and practices and sometimes during the games that he believes in the coaches and he believes in the, st- in the staff uh, and the players. He still, he still believes Ren. So don't worry. <laughs> the GM 
has got the players back, which is, you know, it is... I guess what you want the GM to say, right? You want him to have the players and the coaches back, right? Even in, in these times of trouble. I mean, what is it? What else is he supposed to say? Tay? It's right. a canned answer. All yeah. of it was canned answer. Like, yeah. Oh, Rasul, we're going to really miss him. He's a really important part of our team. But we also know Rasul after Sunday's loss said, I've never been a loser in my life. These last two years have been effing. I've been an effing loser. That ain't <laughs> she is to me, Tay. And, you know, then Brian's like, well, Buffalo came calling. And right. so then we started listening. Do you think that's also more speak? Like, hey, the one vocal leader in the locker room starts maybe saying just, and you didn't get too far into it, but saying maybe there's some issue with the coaching. And you can always say that that's, that's a thing. Like, it, it, like we, we always think like, when is it like, did, did the one guy that made maybe, waves a little bit affect? Maybe possible yourself out the door I mean, you, you go you always have to ask yourself that question and then and we'll never get the answer to that you got you know guys like josh sitting getting getting put out kicked out the door like pretty quick after you know he makes a ruckus and stuff like that and and you know has fiery words and stuff but um it, they, you know there were reports that people were coming to his locker room um you know on on jordan Monday. was lying on him for for leadership and, yeah, as they were well coming and to him to after to, the game. to be you know to come to some sort of resolve to and look to him and he was very vocal right he was he was the one vocalizing a lot in the locker room with the his frustrations players. yeah of the team but he's he's also that that cohesiveness that you needed um you know you saw during training camp he was he was picking fights across um across the line of scrimmage to the defense in practice and training camp to rile the guys up and like to get them moving. And like, he was that person. Don't you and need guys like that on your football team? I think so. So it's, it, I'm shocked. I was kind of really surprised that they traded away Rasul. Like, um, for a lot of different reasons. And one we're just, we're talking about here, like he's going to be missed in the locker room. Like, like big uh, time. And so then you got to go through that whole process. Just that alone. You go through the, the, hey, it, this leaves a big hole in the roster here, right? Like, there's. I mean, the no, D backfield wasn't real, and now great, it's right? Bad. Eric Stokes, who who knows? He's on IR again. He's he's like so he, he can't come back for, for three half more half weeks. Half a game. He's now he's gone. So he's not he's not around. You got Carrington Valentine. You got Corey Valentine. You have Keyshawn Nixon, who is probably not a edge corner. He's probably more of that. He's slot. a slot, yeah. So, but are they going to put him? Are they gonna have to put him out there? They're gonna say no, uh, Carrington. It's it's your your job now. Go, go get out there and do it. And then they got some guy, Robert. They just Rochelle. signed today, I believe. Ty. Um, nah, you, you you'll see him out there. Twenty two, I'm sure. Anyway, the, the the bottom line is that that room is thin, and so the, yeah, the questions thrown at 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 Brian Gutekunz were very valid, and I was very impressed with that media today. I will give usually I'm really hard on the media, but today really good questions. Good job, because they were like, you know, you're not looking to the future, but you are with this kind of move. That's what you said. So that's another aspect here. Are they, is this telling of what the GM's doing in in the kind of grand scheme of things? Are they embracing or, or actually um, doing something that, that uh, shows that they're rebuilding here? And I think this, this one, there's a lot of different reasons it can go. You can pick to be the, the, oh, this is why they did that. Um, yeah, of course he says right away. Well, the bills weren't didn't uh, the, the bills came calling, and then the deal right away wasn't great. Then they upped the ante, and it was something he couldn't refuse. Right? He it was like, oh, we didn't want to move anybody. We weren't planning on moving anybody, but the offer was just so sweet. And then I look at the offer, and I'm like, it's. I mean, you eh. gave up a fifth for a what's let's be honest, a late third, right? You know, because they're not going to finish at the bottom. We know what the Packers do with third round picks. I mean, let, let's uh, let's hope at some point they can get over that bugaboo. But, um, you know, you know it, get a third? they need as much early draft capital. I get it. Like his point, he could be made. You know, it's a top one hundred player. You know, it's probably going to be at a f- top fifty guy on my board. It's going to be there, and potentially you can also package picks. And they have some pretty big holes on along the offensive line. Maybe at quarterback. I mean, there's a. L- Maybe they need a better receiver. I mean, they, need, they got a lot of holes today. So, I mean, in, in that respect, you know, Brian just probably also realizes that like his leash is not very long. And he better, he's got to, he's got to do some, 
some roster building in the short term pretty damn well. So you better have a lot of swings. Um, well, and and this one the bat or or you know darts on the dartboard because he's he may yeah, not yeah. be long for the Packer world but, either. But people will say, hey, Ren, look at this. What just happened here? This is great a GM move, right? You turn a guy off the streets basically from a practice squad and you turn him into a starter, you turn him into one of the cornerstones and then yep. you, you could trade him away for a third round pick. Like, I agree that, and that it, that's a point. Good point to be it, made there. It, there is, but I also couple it with context. Like, like he, you know, we just talked about locker room aspect, huge. Um, leaving a huge void on your roster. Um, and then you're not Good giving, time. and then, so then the other thing is, is what does this look like to the rest of the team? You know, like, like fr- from your standpoint, like, was he talking trash and now, Oh, you're out, Rasul, like sending, sending a message to the other players or it's like, well, anybody can be cut or traded anytime. You guys better get to work or like, are team. we tanking? Like clearly they, as Brian said, clearly when you move a guy like this, you don't get better, which is pretty factual. Um, yeah. I mean, it has a lot of reverberation, no doubt. And I, in a I, locker room, especially, I find it interesting the the sentiment by a GM like this to to basically say, um, you know, no, it doesn't help us, and no, we're not tanking, and no, it's not going to help us win this Sunday, but that just means everyone else has to step up and play better, and it doesn't help us win, but we're not trying to lose. Like that's basically what he's saying here. That's the most scripted GM crap of all time do you do you believe any of that do you do you think like he's expecting this team to win at this point no i mean we all see it he knows they're not gonna win they're they're bad now they're gonna win less so yeah i mean it is what it is i mean these guys are gonna tee off on the packer defensive backfield and they already i mean they already have in a lot of games i mean we've we've seen we'll talk about a little bit you know what the Vikings did against the Packers on third down and what three guys catching the football did the Packers. Um, the D the D backfield, we, they were already bad at safety and now they're even, they were banged up at cornerback and now they're even worse. You know, Jair's had back issues. He hasn't been his all pro self. And I don't know when, certainly not any time this season. Um, Keyshawn's a nice player plays with a little heart. He's mm-hmm. one guy yep. that does that. Carrington has been picked on when he's got some opportunities. Obviously he was the, you know, he was the newbie. Pre- he was the, he was the wonder of, you know, the preseason training, training camp. Yeah. You know, darling of training. Camp. Yep. Valentine came off the practice squad and Robert Rochelle is literally, you know, just who? there. Who? So, right. <laughs> but that's where they're at, man. Yep. Yep. And it's going to show. Yep. So, uh, it's going to be real interesting. I, I just, I think that Brian, I think that Brian just, you know, he, yeah, he, he, that was that deal that the bills gave him was enough to say yes. And I knew, I think he knows that it, all the baggage that this was going to bring the team, bring himself, but That's what I he did a presser, man. I, I think he always does one after the trade. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe at the end of the year, we're like, wow, he really had some balls to do that like good work like it, maybe after next draft or something we're like holy crap this you know good job so he's got to make moves and i, I don't know and it, when they talk about matt lafleur being like communicated with about this and then matt's asked later he's like basically totally de- defers doesn't even answer the question like um hey dude how did you feel about that did you were you asked about it he's just like ah whatever it's, it is what it is i don't control that stuff blah 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 and, my, and Brian's like, oh yeah, we talk all the time. <laughs> yeah, we did. We we I, I called him up. We we sat down. We we hammered it out. No, no. He's, it was, Matt's like, I mean, um, translation. Matt Lafleur is pissed. Challenge. Yeah, Matt Lafleur is like uh, pissed about it, and he's like challenge, challenge, challenge. So I feel I feel a little bad for Matt Lafleur because um, you, you're putting this guy that's already like in a tense, stressful situation. Now you're making it worse. And you know, is, is that a, a rightful thing to, to give him and to put on him, uh, from my standpoint, like, a, I don't know, whatever. It, I, I hate to say it is what it is, but he has to deal what he's, what he's being handed here. And that's the, that's the part of part of the job. That's the head coach job is to do this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, this this comes one day after extending Rashawn Gary, right? And so, 
was that timed, you know, coincidence or I don't not? think so. I mean, Brian always liked to sign one guy that was a major cog right about late October. Um, and I thought, I thought Rashawn would get done this year mid season. And in fact he did, because, you know, that's one of the Packers MOs when it comes to GMs is rolling some of that yeah. into this year's cap, lessening next year's hit, you know, getting that signing bonus money in there and, and prorating that out. So and keeping a good um, player around that. You, right. You it, like. it, well, generally when you look up and down this roster at the moment, Tay, there aren't there, there's less than four or five guys you can point to that you go, that's a really good football player. And this is probably the best one they have. Yeah. Um, now, limited sample size this year, but coming off an ACL faster everything, everything, than basically yeah. anybody other than Adrian Peterson in NFL history. Right. Um, everything he's doing is great. Though. Right. He's not. Rashawn is a workout warrior. I mean, yeah. he, you know, and he even talked about it after getting the deal. You know, I, I'm here to continue to prove what I did, what I earned and what I do. And I'm on to the Rams. That's what I'm worried about. Um, he has the right ad to That's just you can't teach that kind of work ethic. Um, so, I mean, the Rashawn Gary signing Tay was was massive before I get to some of those numbers. Obviously, one of the other interesting anecdotes with Brian's presser um, was there were a lot of Jordan speak in that thing. Um, and he said, you know, that because he's really had his chance to go out there and, and game plan week in, week out, week out to me right now, it's looking at the small victories, the small improvements and making sure we're moving forward. If that doesn't. If that stops happening, then there's some problems. But right now, I think we're seeing little things. So he's not like saying this guy's for sure it, but I've, I am seeing a little bit of growth. And that he goes on to say, like, as long as we see improvement, it's good. But he's not. He certainly didn't green light Jordan Love either. He, I have him quoted as saying he's he has faith in Jordan still. He still has faith in Jordan. Right. And I I uh, I still have faith in him too, that he will be better than a lot of people who are making him out to be right now. I don't, I, I think I've said this for a few weeks and it still remains true to me. He it's not, he's like, he has some problems. He has issues, but this is not all on him. This, there's so many wrong things with this team. He's just a piece of that puzzle that has uh, turned this, this team into a, a losing team. Uh, it's not all on him. And is he playing great football? No. He's, does he have great deep balls? Is he throwing in inaccurate passes? Yes. But he's, I don't think he, you know, should be picked on. I think like he is and there. And you see headlines now, like, like talking about getting rid of him or talking about a bust. And it's like, should they have invested into more weapons for Aaron Rodgers rather than taking him? And we know the answer is yes, but whatever we, we were dealt the hand. Well, well they shouldn't have, taking Jordan when we, when they did, you know, that was always right. my argument. They created yeah. all this. Yep. It was basically Brian Gutekunst created the drama with yeah. the pick. And yep. then, then he was tied to it. So, so. That, that, you know, that it, I see that out there now. It's like, well, I thought this was going to be, this was supposed to be. So w what, what did you, I've, I guess I've wanted to ask you this for a long time, Ren. Like, what did you expect from the Packers and Jordan love this year with, with what was, what started out at week one with that, with that roster and everything that has happened. Obviously we, before the season even broke, I mean, you and I talked about, there were going to be a lot of growing pains. I mean, we talked about how bad they were with some false starts and in training camp and in the preseason that they were just not. And that was offensive linemen. That was wide receivers that there was going to be a lot of growing pains. So indeed we are seeing a lot of growing pains. And I mean, you see it week to week. It's just that it's so bad. Tay, when you're two and five, you, now you're into week eight and you see the same crap every week. I mean, the, yeah. these young yep. wide receivers, and by the way, the second year wide receivers like Dobbs and Watson regressing and guys running the wrong routes consistently on numerous occasions, every football game, the wide receivers are doing that. So that helped them Jordan out. They have the worst contested catch rate in the NFL. So none of these guys are dogs either. No. None of them are going to help out their their quarterback and he needs yep. some freaking help like what is what's what's the problem there like why don't these guys fight for the ball they don't have none of them seem to have that instinct or that that drive to do that what why are they so lazy why are they so poorly coached 
Uh, Jason Vrabel, I'm looking at you, like Matt LaFleur, like what's your deal here? Because that core has a lot of talent, but they play like, they play like shit. Okay, they do. I mean, excuse my French, but that wide receiver core is not good at all. No, no. Uh, and I, you get frustrated every week now when you see either a, a bad route, when you go back and look at the, the tape, uh, guys don't seem to be open right away. I thought we were going to start out great with, I think we had like, um, I think the, in the first drive, we had a quick, quick pass. And I was like, okay, this is good things to come. And then you, what, go four, four and outs in a row <laughs> to start the game? The same old, same old, man. But like the epitome of the receiving comp, uh, complaint that you're talking about is when Jaden Reed gets a ball stripped from him out of right out of his hands by the defense for interception. <laughs> and, and he's got to have that ball at the very least, not let that interception happen. Right. That's, and that's on him. It yeah. was terrible play to, it was awful. So like, that, those are, those are the things there that, like you said, are still happening. Um, and I guess to, to, we'll, we'll get back to the Rashawn Gary thing in a second, but I mean, the, the Packers were beating themselves up. They were getting in their own way still again. So this is like what's been happening over weeks now. Um, the penalties, though, that, that happened on the Vikings oh my God, were, were atrocious. They put themselves in bad situations because of it. You can't win like that. You can't even like like attempt to compete when you're doing hey, this. Here's, right? a, here's a team that took until almost nearly halftime to hit the 100-yard <laughs> mark. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And also had... 11 penalties for 99 yards. There is no way in hell those two, just saying those two things that a football team has any chance of winning a game doing that. If you're putting up a hundred yards of total offense and a half of football and in a game of football, you're putting up a hundred yards of penalties. You're done. You're terrible. You're not going to sniff a dub Tay. It's not. No. And, and this is before we get into, and we will, um, as we just kind of go and zigzagging everywhere. And I think this is how it feels to be a Packer fan right now, because there's mm -hmm. so much garbage <laughs> to talk about. You're just like, let's go down this this I this know. path or this one. They're all they're all just they all lead to nowhere good. But it's it's so easy to just get caught up in it. Uh, but my God, they're bad, Tay. They're so bad. Like, and so the, the, it, the penalties really crippled the Packers um, on Sunday. It, it, it really did. Without those penalties, maybe you have a, a competent showing of or not. Maybe, whoa, whoa, what, what am I saying? That's not right either. Maybe you have like a chance to be competitive, maybe against this Vikings team. But with the with the all the penalties, the mix miss execution still all over the place. There, it's just which I, is I, coaching too, Dave. Just big coaching. time. Yep, and then you got. The bad play calling, I think. Oh, uh, it's it's and, so. When you could start calling it day, and I'm sure you did, mm -hmm. and you knew it's coming, you're like, so the, what's going on? You know, offensive genius Matt Lafleur, right, right? So, and and my my pinpoint, my I, I, you can target this one drive when we got down to the one yard line of the Vikings. We had the ball there, um, and then you pour, proceed. You you have basically in my mind, you have four downs to get the ball in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Like you're on the one yard line. I say you run the ball four times. Just get it. You can get a yard, right? Can can they? you? So, but the problem is you you're in shotgun. You, you you Jordan go into shotgun. Okay, you're you're gonna you're gonna be back a few yards. We'll have AJ Dillon sitting next to you, and we're gonna hand the ball off to him a couple times. Yeah, and he's already now what three yards behind the line behind, of scrimmage, and and he's got to start from from zero. Yeah, he's not the ball picking up the any ball. speed. There's no sp instead of being out of the eye, Tay. Under center, and so you, so I, we've been hard on AJ Dillon, but you do not put him in a situation like that and expect him to get anywhere. You can't. He's got to be running already. Get him outside. Get him running, throwing the ball. Get him running, again, pitching the ball. Get him getting eye overload formation. Overload aside and bootleg day. Just do it. So simple so stuff. That was the epitome. I'm sitting there yelling at the screen, going, "Why aren't you under center?" And then AJ can get the ball already running with some momentum with yeah. some momentum and you get a yard bad play calling shame on on Matt LaFleur for doing it twice in a row and then we have to go forward and fourth down we luckily get the 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 pass to Romeo Dobbs to get that touchdown but that was just hair pulling uh a hair pulling drive 
And you're, I just cannot believe that that still is happening in week four of this losing streak. You're not putting your biggest bull rusher in a position to get that yard. He's all, that's a yard. And, and you are, you're not, how, what's the worst situation we can put AJ Dillon to run this ball in? Okay, well, let's do that. Start at zero miles an hour, Ugh. three yards behind the line of scrimmage. So if, if yeah. we can see that from our comfy sofas, Ren, um, the, the play calling is terrible. It's, it's, it's real bad. So, you, do, so play, play calling is, is, is an issue. So do you think Matt is overwhelmed here? Do you think Matt? I think he totally is. I think he's like so ill-prepared now. I think he's losing the locker room. Like I heard him in, in the post game presser. He's at one point he's talking about, you know, how they need to get back to brass tacks and practice, <laughs> simplify these things and make sure, you know, they're ready. And then on the other hand, he literally, I think like two sentences later talked about how they really had a good week of practice. Yeah. You're like, so which one is it, Matt? Yeah. I, I don't know. And I don't think you know what you're talking about anymore. Like it just, yeah. I don't, I don't understand. And, and he talks about, he's like, we, we have a process. We stick to the process. I trust the process. He said that a bunch of times in the last few weeks. And you're like, dude, shake things up. And I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to see people get on him for wanting to shake things up because that's exactly what you have to do here. Like what, what do you expect them to do? They've done everything the same every week and it hasn't worked out. So yeah, go shake things up. That's your job as a coach is to like regroup, you know, and do whatever it takes to get back onto track or have positive uh, plays and momentum here into a long 10 games. Like, so I, I hope, I hope that he really does shake things up. You just go back to the vanilla, vanilla offense. Let's just try take someone else's playbook. I don't know. Like it doesn't matter. This team looks like they are still in preseason mode they're playing preseason games they're in training camp that's what they look like they're executing everything like they're still in practice i think they look worse than they did in training camp too well uh, they're not they're they're playing themselves in training camp but <laughs> that they look terrible they look like uh uncoached undisciplined and they're still like they i feel like they're still practicing they're like oh like the wide receivers you w- w- watson like let's go here you're supposed to be our guy when the, when the announcers are still calling you WR1, like, go out there and prove it, man. You're Which not. Which he's not at all. Nobody is, but uh, for that matter. But again, what yeah. is it? Matt's saying they have these good week of practices, but he needs a simplified practice. <laughs> like, so practice is go- good during the week. Like, how do they not show up on game day? Like, uh, something, there's just mm-hmm. some, something really stinks there, Tay, and, and doesn't, there's, I'm unable to connect the dots with that. So there's there's a lot of like like w- what if Matt Lafleur is is overwhelmed he do, he's got so many things to ha- uh, manage and handle right now um, that it's really hard for him to maybe focus on something on one thing when there's so many things um, I don't know I don't know where you stand on that sentiment there's you know there, I think people are trying to rationalize this and saying like well from the evidence this could be it this could be it this could be it so. <laughs> You know, I don't know what to think about Matt LaFleur. I know you're you're saying, well, well it's time to think about uh, axing him at the end of the year, but I don't. I no, don't I know mean, if I, think, I think he gets the whole year. I mean, I'm I don't I'm not all this. Let's fire somebody tomorrow to shake it up because I don't think that's going to produce any results. I mean, essentially, they did that just by trading Rasul. You essentially just like, yeah, we fired this guy and we're yeah. going to get better later. Because who 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 besides Rich Bisaccia would come in and, and be the head coach and then who at the end of the year is going to be your new head coach? Like that you have to ask who is who out there is better when when, I, when I really, all these things I, come up. I like I really like the the Lions offensive coordinator personally, but I mean at this point you don't want to even go there. You you want to say, "Hey, we got 10 games to go and see some improvement and we'll cross a bridge." when it happens do you do you see a, a world where the packers are good with matt lafleur as head coach if he has a, a reasonably competent offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator yeah potentially and he can just be that guy that he was for the first three years of his of his tenure here like do you think that guy exists or is that just a shroud uh, aaron shroud I, I don't know that's a really good question to i don't i don't know that i think if matt had a better coaching staff and there was less you know, promote with, with, within, yeah. um, obviously there was some brain drain. We talked about that in past yep. seasons. Um, they, they may be in a better position. 
I, I think a lot of guys that are there are not set out to coach positions they're at. You know, I would literally like just, you know, you get those stupid thoughts like, you know, you could probably hire Donald Driver today and replace Jason Brabel. <laughs> and Donald Driver, who played receiver in Green Bay for years, probably can coach these wide receivers up better. Yeah. They'd probably listen to him more. Wasn't right off the bat. They're young guys and sure. be like, yeah, you did this. He was a seventh round guy to Alcorn State. It's just kind of stuff like that. Like, and, and he worked his ass off to get where he was. I just don't think some of the guys they have are, are cut out for, for what they're doing. I think there's a lot of vanilla coaching. Um, I think there are a lot of guys in over their heads on that coaching staff. I'm, I'm looking at the coaching staff. You can see me do that. I, I was looking for Ruvel Martin. I thought I thought maybe he was like the. I think he was a consultant a with them for, or for a little while, but uh, I don't yeah. see him on here anymore. Like, bring in that guy. He was here playing decent football. And and I'm when I say that about Donald, I'm not saying he wants to do that. I'm just saying like think about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just not. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Matt Lafleur's picture up here for you to look at for the rest of the episode. Oh, God, I see, and and my I guess my point is, and I'm I'm trying to kind of poke you a little bit and poke the universe out there. Out, it, you know, is Matt Lafleur ultimately the problem here? Is he a good coach? I think those are questions we don't really. He's know. a good looking coach. He's a good looking coach, and that really is all that matters, Ren. <sighs> That's. That's about all I can say <laughs> with good and mad at this point. Is that why they put the defensive offensive coordinators up in the booth? Perhaps. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I think this team looks JV right now. They look. I think they look like they're still in, in preseason mode. Um, and I think if you just remove those mistakes, it, that's why I'm so upset about these losses is because these stupid things that can be changed. You know they can be changed. Well, it's like, the, well, two point. But I think it's more like you just see them the same stuff every week. It's like the it's a replay of the game you watched the week prior. Yeah. The slow starts, the inability to move the football, putting yourself behind the eight ball by the time it's the second half. Um, you know, poor choices with the football at times, poor coaching when it counts. Like when, you know, they had a, how, how many opportunities they have to run better plays inside the red zone and late in the game to, in a game they really yes. didn't belong to be back. Two. They, it, twice they, they didn't, had they didn't really belong to be back in this game. Let's, no, let's be they, honest. They had a chance. But they had a, they had opportunity there given yes. to them. They were they were to be two, back two into opportunities the game. and they blew them. And and, and the, the lack of any interesting play call slash ability to move the football with you know a play call that would would make sense just again it just a uh, it's the same stuff week in week out Tay. I mean, we're here. So let's, let's talk about that, that game Tay. You had the 11 for 99 yards on penalties. There wasn't a single first down until late in the second quarter. The Minnesota Vikings Tay converted on 11, third or fourth down opportunities, including eight conversions on third <laughs> and eight or longer. Eight conversions of third and eight or longer Tay. That tells you your pass defense sucks. Like, and you and you just traded Rasul Tay. Uh, so get ready. Um, the only bright spot, Tay, is the Packers held the Vikings to 62 rushing yards and 31 attempts. So like 2.2 yards a carry. The the Vikings, though, let's be honest, terrible running. Yeah, I mean, I think They're Cam one of the worst Akers maybe helps them a little bit, but they, they just scored their first rushing touchdown of the season against in that the game against the Packers. The, the I mean, pa not the, surprising. The Packers are the ultimate get right team. If you want to, if you want to get yourself right, you play the Packers and you get these things that you you, you, you know, you're struggling it's like with. Feel, a, a feel good about yourself yeah. game. Oh, you haven't got a rushing touchdown. We'll pay the we'll, play the Packers. We'll, we'll take care of that for you. Oh, you, you want to get your third third uh, third down pr uh, conversion rate up? Yeah. By the Packers. It's gonna it's gonna <laughs> do you do you wonders. It's like going to a spa right. if you're an NFL right. team. Although, um, although so there's not not it's not spa weather according to Simone Biles. She she gets cold up here. So no, I mean I think but a lot of people told her what you know how to how to handle the cold. She was wearing here. a sweatshirt on the sidelines, Tay. I don't know what do you. It expect? wasn't sweatshirt weather. No. Even Wisconsin, it's like I'm gonna put on a jacket. Yeah, you know, and and a hat. Maybe she had a hat. I don't know. Simone, you, you got to layer up. Um, the Packers, Tay, 
of, co- of course, couldn't catch the football. At least 10 drops or failed contested catches situations, as we talked about earlier. Nice. Uh, yay. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings stay three players. That'd be KJ Osborne, TJ Hawkinson, and Jordan Addison, with at least six catches, 80 plus yards, and one catch of 20 or more yards. Oh, better than our O. Uh, yes, Tay. Much, much better. The Green Bay Packers, Tay, have been outscored 73 to 9 in the first half of their past five games, down 10 3 at the break on Sunday. And their most recent first half touchdown came in the second quarter of a 25 24 loss at Atlanta all the way back on September. 17th. I don't even know what to say to that. The offense has been particularly bad in the stretch day scoring 20, 13, 17, 10 points and gaining only more than 285 yards once um, in any of those games. But that's, yeah, that's bad, Tay. Look at those points that went from 20 to 13. Oh, mm-hmm. pick a tick up to 17 and 10. Oof. Aaron Jones got another healthy. 11 touches <laughs> on the day, Tay. <laughs> Woo! Uptick. I Either think. he's healthy and give the damn ball to Aaron Jones, or, yeah, like everybody else is saying, put him on IR. One of the two, Matt LaFleur, <laughs> don't do this crap because this is just absolutely ridiculous. Dylan! What about, but what about Dylan? He's catching the ball now. He's like their top receiver. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. saying a lot. <laughs> that's saying a lot, Tay, because at least he can hold on to it, unlike the rest of uh, the rookies and second-year wide receivers who most of them uh, got hands of stone. I, I thought it was it, funny to me from the Packers' angle, like early in the fourth quarter when I thought the Packers finally got to Kirk Cousins. Oh, they got him. They got him sacked. And then it, you replay it, and you're like, oh. No, he, he fell down. He wasn't even hit. That's when he tore his Achilles. Yeah. This is when the Packers got to him and he actually... They just, didn't even get to him. It, like, did, yeah, it was a non-contact fell, he, injury yeah, and, and then he fell, he over fell and into he Kenny him. Clark. <laughs> and they're like, Kenny, sack. I was like, holy crap, they got to... Oh. No, 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 no. no they didn't. And, I, and honestly, on that note, I feel really bad for Kirk. That's, that's an awful thing. And he was having a great season. He was. And at least yep. the Viking fans could root for their team because they had something to root for. Yeah. And now they probably don't. And that, that sucks, you know? It's just like... Uh, just makes you you just feel kind of gross you know anybody who's cheering that's just just get over yourself you know kirk kirk seems like a you know nice milk toast kind of dude i mean it just you know it's unfortunate you don't you don't root for that for anybody um back to rashawn though i think he it's like somewhere like a 107 million dollar contract 35 million guaranteed and probably fudging the numbers but they're around there uh good for him he deserves it uh congratulations uh, Rashan, uh, you're our best player at the moment and you, whatever you do out there is great and you need to help us out. But, um, I, you know, I don't, you, you can say, and maybe I'm buying into this like more rebuild thing. I think it was a reload, uh, for a little while, but now with the, uh, departure of Rasul, I, I can kind of see now how we can get into this rebuild mode more now. Uh, maybe cut some ties with some guys at the end of the season go for more draft picks, go for cheaper and pay the guys when they actually are. We need them like Rashawn, like pay the, pay the man. Mm-hmm. And you know, you're, you got a lot of dead cap money sitting there, uh, taking up room. Once that's gone, uh, maybe these, some of these rookie contracts or, or, uh, longer contracts are still out there and we don't have to pay guys for a while yet. So I think, I think it's a good strategy. Really. I do. And um, they were at least part of their whole rebuild comes in fact that they were kind of in a cap hell after. Yeah. Throwing all that money at, you know, what it was in 1920, you know, try to bring in the guys they did and they knew they're, they kicked the can. Remember what used to be one of our, yep. you know, pieces oh, yeah. of vernacular kicking the can, like they kick the can a lot. And sometimes, you know, eventually it, it's, you know, you catch up to the can, you kick down the road. So, uh, but yeah, according to our, our friend over at ESPN who covers the Packers up being uh, Robert Domovsky Tay. The deal is uh, includes ninety six million in new money, including a thirty four million six hundred forty six thousand nine hundred twenty eight dollar signing bonus. Bonus uh, total. Ching. The total value of the deal, which runs through twenty twenty seven season, Tay could be worth up to one hundred seven thousand five hundred thirty one hundred seven million five hundred thirty two thousand seven hundred six dollars 
including all bonuses. So the way this thing works out, if, if people looked at how Ken Engels broke it down as well, etc., it's a pretty fair deal for both sides. It puts him in top five edge rusher market money, but it's not like, you know, break the bank Nick Bosa, which was like a $170 million oh, yeah. deal. Um, this is a good good deal for both sides. Yeah, I agree. I just hope, you just hope Rashawn doesn't uh, uh, take a page out of Jair's handbook here and uh disappear for the next disappear once he uh what where where's jair anyway oh he's he's either injured but ever since that shoulder injury man he's just kind of he's been reluctant to come up fill and tackle yeah you know it's true so uh so yeah the packers um had their ups and downs even after the football game with uh one of the ups being rashan's extension one of the downs being Trading away Rasul. Um, around the NFL, though, before we get to the Rams, um, the Bears fired their running backs coach uh, yesterday. And they, they actually made a trade in, even though they're on the suckdom scale. Then we know that they, we talked, obviously, um, with our Bear friend mm-hmm. um, in week one, Tay. Joey. And that'd be Joey. And, you know, one of the things Joey pointed out um, was that. Uh, they're really, really light at the edge position. They didn't have much there. So bringing a Montez sweat for a second was that's, that's given up a lot, but yep. Montez is, I think his last year of his deal. So the bears are going to have to get this guy signed, but, a, yeah. re, but a really nice player today, a, yeah. re, a really nice football player. And the Niners go grab the other <laughs> Washington edge rusher. Um, uh, help me chase uh, Claypool. No, no, no. Uh, chase young, chase young. And you know, in his last year, his as well. So I mean, yeah. the rich get richer out there in San Fran. So there was some, there was a little bit of light movement yesterday, not quite as much as last year, but uh, um, yeah, some interesting things to say the least. And then um, on, a, I guess like on a front office uh, part of it, uh, you have the Raiders basically making moves again. Mark Davis himself, haircut man, uh, fires the head coach. Josh McDaniels and their GM yesterday. And you just got to sit back and like chuckle at this again. Chuckle at this again. Uh, yeah, they're still paying Chuck too. So they owe Josh 10 million a year for like four more years. He's got like four years left in the deal. And they yeah. still have another like four or five years of Gruden money at 10 million a season he, left Davis on this. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. How he, do you have that much a, money? Because that's all you owe it. Yeah, he just. That's crazy, Tay. And to, you know, for, I guess if you just looked at this context of this year, maybe you'd do that. Maybe you pull the trigger on that. But, I mean, the Raiders are have been just a, a, a trash fire. Do you think forward. Devontae got these two guys fired? Probably. I mean, he, was, he was grousing if, on the sidelines. he side doesn't slam his helmet and get pissed off, does this happen? I don't know. I don't know. But are you starting to let Devontae, like, kind of force <laughs> choices on this team? I don't know. Because, I mean, clearly Carr would still be there if that was the case. But Davis um, I don't know. doesn't know what he's doing. And that's been clear the last 10 years. He he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, and I I feel bad for Raiders fans because that team is so That's up where and ownership, down all, man. Uh, yep, exactly. You're just like, Ugh. And, you know, that's why I, I still will say I would rather be in, in the Packers situation here with what we're, what's going on and, and the the how it progresses. There's no sudden movements. There's no... Uh, bad moves necessarily True, like but it's there's all... never gonna be a like yeah like a stan Kroenke rams like we're just gonna go get one right and the you... packers are never gonna do that no we're never gonna go all in we're never gonna They're like tank hey. we're just gonna be right in the middle <laughs> right, man, it's right, a, right it's a bad place to be Tay. you don't want to be <laughs> middling you want to you want to suck the rest of the season and get one of those quarterbacks you you just don't want or you want to like win all the rest of the games and Somehow you're, you know, what, uh, 12 and five, you know, it just, you just can't, you can't be in the middle because you don't get much from there. No, no, but there's no way that this team is actively tanking. I, I will not believe that. Ever. I don't think that either, but I mean, you look at Brian Gutekunst, he's an okay GM Tay, but when I look like at Howie Roseman out in, in Philadelphia, we've talked about him a number of times over the years, you know, he's the first guy to strike you know, last what Wednesday or Thursday he goes and gets a hell of a safety. He he sets the market. He gets a good value out of it because he's not going to wait for every team to start dictating. He just goes out and gets gets a guy. You know, right now the Eagles quietly have the best 
record in the, in the National Football League, and it's not by mistake because this this guy continues to roster build season after season. And meanwhile, we got you know a conservative football team that's a little afraid to kind of take it by the rain sometimes. That doesn't mean you have to go <laughs> you have to go cronky it and you know just go buy one. But I mean, at times you have to, yeah, and this is this is yeah. not the time to be. You know, aggressive, but there were some times, you know, at the where trade deadline yeah. like, two, three years ago where they yep. should have been like, we need this kind of player. I'm going to go get one. It's true. And it's, but that's now it's water well under the bridge. Yes, it is. Um, well, let's move on to the Rams, Ren. I know uh, they're coming to town and um, back in, you know, a few years ago, we would have loved to have the Rams come into town because we weren't doing so well out there playing against them. Um, and they were uh, kind of a different team. Right now, they're middle of the road, actually under five hundred. I think they're are they three and yeah, they're they're three and five. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're they're not doing great. I think they are underwhelming this year, uh, in terms of where they where people thought they were going to be. So yep. they're a little underwhelming. But in my mind, the way things are going with the Packers and with them, the last couple games, I know it, it, things they are got, turning they around. got shellacked. Yes. Playing the Cowboys last weekend, I, but I, I still think they seem to they, they had prior to that game seemed to be trending in the right, right direction. Yes. And and you know when you look at the players, I think they should be. Um, is the running game all that? I, no, I mean, Ky- Kyren, but, but they Williams are playing or, the right running defense to get right against. You know, yeah, and you know so. Matt Stafford, whatever he's he's decent, but he can have his hot games. He can have his his missed games. I think he has seven interceptions, eight touchdowns. Uh, so you know you're always right for a, a, a Matt INT anytime, um, but at least he's you know he's back there being competent. Uh, you know and you can I'm sure Rams fans are maybe a little up and down on him, um, but for the most part you have a decent quarterback, and then the wide receivers. I mean you have good wide receivers. That's probably their strength right now, and the Packers now coming in without Rasul and a weak secondary. I'm super worried. This isn't going to be good. They're going to throw all day on us. I don't even think they have to worry about our bad run defense when they are going to be able to move the ball. Our best aspect of our team was probably our defense coming into this game. Now I think it's even playing field with the offense with this uh, bad secondary now that we have and all bets are off. I don't. I don't even know what to think about this. I just know we're going to lose this game. Um, I. I will be surprised if we have any sort of positive um, aspect to this game. So we'll see. I'm just going to sit back and relax and enjoy it. But tell me what you got on these Rams. I didn't bring a lot to. I knew there would be a lot of just. Um, yeah. Stuff to melancholy. <laughs> yeah, unwind from the last of uh, the from the. Skull chance to the uh, <laughs> um, Rasul trade and everything in between since we last spoke. I mean, it has been great. Uh, one thing the Packers may have going for them is that um, Matt Stafford suffered a right thumb UCL sprain in the game last weekend. Initially, early right after the game happened, they thought they might put him on IR. You know, now as a midweek, he's day to day. He said, you know, and then obviously they come out and say, no, he's not going to go on IR. So he could play Sunday, but you could also be looking at Brett Rippon as the guy um, when you're talking about a right sprained thumb, essentially. Um, so that is one of those things to really watch up to game day. Um, the Rams and the Packers, and we t- I was just talking earlier, Tay, Kroenke went out and bought one a, a few years ago. He invested a lot of assets. You know, we When they went out and got people like Jalen Ramsey no longer there, obviously brought in uh, some good middle linebacker help. OBJ was over there. There's all sorts of players they had in the mix at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as a result, they kicked the can hard too. Rams and the Packers are the two youngest teams in the league right now, Tay. The Packers' average age is 25.9 years, slightly younger than the Rams, who now average an age of 25.73. And remember, that's... That the Rams are averaging that with, you know, a thirty what six year old quarterback in there. We don't even have anybody close to that age in our roster. Um, <laughs> right. The Rams nor the Packers have been very good at uh, taking a ball away this season. Tay, 
each of these uh, futile teams have only six total takeaways, which is tied for the fewest in the league. So neither of these defenses uh, seem to rise to the occasion today. It's been a couple years since the Packers really were able to create turnovers at a decent clip. They've just been bad at it. Yeah. They do, they oh, do yeah. not take nope. the ball away. And that's coaching too, you know. You, you remember for years, was it the Bears? Like every time there's a play, like every guy's swatting at the ball. Yeah. It's just like how you're taught, you know, that that piece. And it's certainly not, the, the Packers are not ball hawks. I mean, from Quay Walker missing a, you know, easy interception last week, they, the guys just don't catch the ball. I don't know. I, you assume they're working on the hands drills all the time in in practice during the week, but yeah. man, they just are not good at it. I, I just don't think we're getting any results. I, I I do see the guys swinging at the balls, and it's usually Quay Walker. He's punching the well, ball. Quay is like again one of the few bright spots of any player on the team that you look at. That's a good young football player. Yeah. He's he's physical. He's he's a little salty. If you I don't know if you ever seen him with helmet off, he just looks kind of mean. Yeah. Um, Quay Walker is a oh. the kind of football player you want to have. He's a football player. He he wants to go out and play football and and punch you in the face. Yeah. Yep. You know that's that's what you want out of a football player. Probably why he got ejected twice last well, year. Yeah. He's you know he's got a hot head a little bit. That's that's okay. I'd rather have him be like, you know, I you, edgy, we didn't like it edgy. when it happened, but I, yeah, I'd rather have him be a little edgy than than some guys who just yeah play when they when they're feeling like it. So I think I don't know. I think with the three and five record, the the Rams are potentially better than they than they they are shown to be. Um, they're kind of in the, in the middle uh, of the of the stat uh, sheet. Um, so yeah, but it it doesn't matter who we're playing. Ren to me, the Packers' worst uh, and diff- most difficult opponent is themselves right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I don't care who's coming to Lambo. We we have to take care of our own stuff to even make this, um, you know, to, I guess even to move forward with progression, move forward with, you know, how, how do you coach? How do you move forward with like building a team when, when you're losing like this and like everything just seems to be in flux. It just seems like a, you're, you're, you're spinning your wheels. You're well, and now you got to think to like morale's is going to be down this week. Cause they traded yeah. Russell. You got to think like, like it. it sounds you got to like think it. like morale is dropped. And now they're going to this game with morale dropped. And you said things have been hard as it is. Yep. You know, um, they interviewed a lot of guys today and they had locker room interviews and, and, and nobody was, yeah, nobody's feeling up. No one's like, everyone was shocked. Yep. And, you know, they interviewed Jair and he, he Jair mostly played the, you know, and said the right things, but he was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I was shocked. I was like, and he like didn't even know until this morning. He yeah. like didn't know yesterday it happened. It was just strange. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, morale, morale down probable uh any i don't know what kind of message would that send to you if if uh you know they 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 sent a guy away like that it probably wouldn't make well, you some guys better. yeah it seems like yeah i guess i don't care about winning this season why should i you know yeah there'll be some guys that take it that way yep. not not yep. all guys some guys would be like you know i'm going to, out to play football and as soon as a soon you know as soon as the whistles blow they're they're just playing a football game. Maybe, but. maybe this is wishful thinking, but maybe they think, okay, well, our, our GM's loading up next year. Okay, well, we get some new guys in here and, uh, you know, we have a young team again. Let's, maybe they're thinking long, long-term too. I don't, long-term, I don't know. Long-term, yeah, yeah, we're getting good, you know, a lot of good practice together in real game time this year that, you know, it's going to go a long way to our, our development in a, in a few years. I mean, certainly some of that will turn out to be true for some guys, but, you know, you know, what will it be against the Rams? I mean, this is a, a team, you know, ninth in passing yards in the league. Um, decent little running game. They they have their 20th in, in, in the league in rushing. Um, Kyron Williams has been not bad. Obviously, they have, you know, potentially the rookie of the year at uh, wide receiver in, in Puka Nakua. Um, I mean, dude's already got 800 yards essentially pa- uh, receiving. That's that's pretty pretty crazy. The defense has dropped off from years past. But uh, yep, yep. Packers, the Packers are going to have their hands full because – Listen, the Packers are one of the worst teams in the NFL. That's that simple at this point. And they have so, to prove otherwise. Yeah. And they until it. until they, they show it, they that's where they find themselves. Do you know the line on this game? I don't. I don't either. Do you? No, so it's gotta be at least three to the Packers, right? And I, I don't know. I, I would I, now no, you're sitting here. We got this these things are called a hand computer. Um, I can just scroll up on the screen right here and show you. You should but, show me the line. Uh, now let's let's see it. Let's just be surprised together, Tay. No, 
Oh, you can't. It's right here. Okay, it is three. They're getting the home field goal, yeah. Tay. Yep. So it means it's a push. Yeah, and let's see if uh, Anders Carlson can hit that one. Hey, he got a he got a mulligan last week, and then he, he made he, he made did. it. Yeah. He made it. So that it's, didn't count. it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I think the Packers. Just I'm trying to think of of what 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 can the Packers score? I think he I think Anders is good for at least a field goal old field goal or two. Okay. So uh, and then you got six like, there. Like, do you, you get a touchdown? They, they always get one a game. At least one touchdown. So now you're talking. You know, maybe maybe if you get another one, so they're not scoring over twenty points. Uh, they haven't since what? That's like four weeks ago. Last time they scored twenty. Yeah. So th- I'm thinking, I, I I'm I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go fifteen. They're scoring fifteen points. Rams will score twenty. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go thirty. Fifteen and thirty. Rams win. I'm gonna go the 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 triple field goal nine and a and a TD so that's gonna give me sixteen to okay, yeah and I'm gonna I'm gonna only go I'm gonna go twenty three sixteen Rams Rams don't do a whole lot either but definitely enough to win the football game I don't know the the Vikings seem to be bam bam they just put the Vikings could have had forty on them easy Tay they left the Vikings left a lot of points on the field yeah the Packers scored twenty against Detroit um man. They scored 24 against Atlanta and 38 against Chicago. So that they're, they're, that offense looks pretty inept right now. It's it's not good, Tay. All right, guys. Well, we'll get out of here. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you supporting us. Uh, Ren, thanks for coming into studio tonight. And uh, make sure you tune in next week. We uh, plan to have a special guest. So stick around for that. Yeah, definitely uh, not one uh, the universe wants to miss next week. Uh, We have a friend rejoin us here on the Pup List. We're looking forward to that conversation. Uh, So until episode 246, Tay, on the Pup List.